look to the scriptures this night, Hebrews chapter number 12. Hebrews 12. Today we have to, have to pray for some people. Specific things. Hebrews chapter number 12, verse number 24. Hebrews 12, verse number 24. Let's take from verse 22 first, so we can better comprehend. Hebrews chapter number 12, verse number 22 to 24. I read from the King James Version tonight. Verse 22 says, But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to the innumerable company of angels. Verse 23, To the general assembly of assembly and church of the firstborn who are, who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all men, to the spirit of just men, the perfect. Verse 24, to Jesus. Someone say to Jesus. Jesus. Someone say to Jesus. Jesus. The mediator of the new covenant and the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of heaven. This month of August, the blood of Jesus will speak better things for you. Amen. I said this month, from this month of August, the blood of Jesus will speak better things for you. Amen. He will speak for you. Amen. He will speak for you. Amen. Most of you will be changing your jobs. Amen. Say, Pastor, how will it happen? When the angel came to Mary, Mary was a virgin. Are we together? Mary was a virgin. When the angel came to her and said, you shall be pregnant. She was like, pregnant? I don't know anyone. I don't have any boyfriend. I don't have, I'm not even married. I'm still a virgin. He said, no. When the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. So with man, it is impossible. When Mary, it was impossible. But when the Holy Ghost comes, that's what I'm saying. With God, it is possible. Don't ask me how will it happen. The Holy Ghost will do it for you. Amen. He will do it for you. Amen. You'll be changing jobs to Amen. better ones. No lesser, better ones. Amen. Better ones. Amen. Better ones. Amen. No connection. Amen. God is a God who can do what no man can do. Amen. Please don't depend on men to be connected. No, connect to the Holy Ghost. He knows how to connect you to the one who gives a job. Amen. He knows how to favor you to the one who... He knows how to do it. But when you depend on men, men will fail you. Please sure. depend on Jesus Christ. Because a man will say, give me money before I give you that job. And the job might be even be fake. There are people who collect money for visa and they give fake visa. But when Jesus wants to do something for you, he does the work. For his name's sake. For his glory. May you testify this morning. Amen. That the Lord has done it for me. Amen. And I cannot tell you all. Thank you, Father. He said, verse 24, he said to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of speaking that speaks better, better what? Yeah. Better thing. What are the things you are expecting? The blood will speak for you. Yeah. <laughs> he said the blood that speaks better things. What are the things? Is it provision? It will provide for you. Is it preservation? It will preserve you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. I'm teaching this evening on the subject, cleansing by the blood of Jesus. Cleansing by the blood of Jesus. Cleansing by the blood of of Jesus. Cleansing by the blood of Jesus. Glory be to God. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, friends, I want us to understand that uh, we began to look at this month of August, we are dealing with the blood of Jesus. So the last month we dealt with the cross of Calvary. So we have to understand that uh, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And the blood was not shed in my house. The blood was not shed in this church, nor in my nation. The blood was shed on the cross of Calvary. So when we began to look at the cross of Calvary, so it has to give us the understanding that we need to go back to the cross as believers, as a church, as a family, as nations, as the world. We need to go back to the cross because our solution is in the cross, not in a man. Are we together? So we looked at the cross of Calvary because there is a power in the cross. Now the blood was shed on the cross of Calvary. So we got to understand that, like Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. It says, it said, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus 17, 11. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Now, medically speaking, if your blood runs out, they have to do blood transfusion. Are we together? If somebody has, uh, somebody had a road accident, traffic accident, and loses blood, the first thing they want to do is they want to make sure that they stabilize him. Number one, blood transfusion is important. Why do they keep blood? Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. Because if he or she loses the blood, all oh, the person will die. Are we together? Because in the blood itself, there are so many components in blood. Are we together? We have the red, we have the red blood cells, which helps me in breathing. Are we together? So you cannot breathe without red blood cells. You can't. Because red blood cells are the ones that actually help us with the hemoglobin to breathe. 
So he noticed that when the blood goes out, your life goes out. The flesh. Are we together? So Leviticus says, the life of the blood is in the life of the flesh is in the blood. So blood is important. Our blood are important. So what more of the blood of the Lamb of God who was shed on the cross of Calvary? Hallelujah. Yeah. Someone say the cleansing. Yeah, cleansing. Say cleansing. 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 By, the by the blood. Now our mission, if you go back to our mission of, uh, 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 sorry, our vision in this ministry, he said to prepare believers for the second coming of our Lord. You cannot be prepared if the blood is not involved. Because by strength shall no man prevail. We, we, you cannot be prepared without the blood. It is the blood that cleanses us to remain available for the wedding. Are we together? No man gets married to a, a woman on his wedding day that the woman is wearing a dirty robe. Have you seen it before? Yes. So, that's why Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Listen, gentlemen. Jesus is coming back soon. So we have to live ready. And how do you live ready? By strength shall no man prevail. Because your righteousness is filthy before God. So it is only the power in the blood that cleanses us for the wedding day. For the rapture. Are we together? So our, our vision says to prepare believers for the second coming of our Lord and Savior. And to restore intimacy with what? With whom? With whom? That is not possible if the blood is not involved. Are we together? The intimacy with God through the Holy Spirit cannot be achieved, cannot be attained if the blood is if the blood has not cleansed you. It's not because why the Bible says when Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, every any man born of woman carried the Adamic seed. So the Adamic seed is sinful before God. So they need to be cleansed in order to be accepted by God. Yes, you might say they are created by God. Yes, but God can create a man and reject the person. I mean, God can create a human being and reject a person. Is that possible? Yes, sir. Is that possible? Yes, okay, give me an example. God created King Saul. Is that true? Yes, sir. But was he rejected or accepted? Yes. Talk to me, somebody. Was he rejected or accepted? Yes, Why? Disobedient. So he can create a human being. Yes, it's true that humans are divine protein. Yes, but the person was what in, in obedience, in alignment with the word of God. So restoring intimacy with God for the second coming through the Holy Ghost is not possible without the blood. The blood of Jesus is the only cleansing agent that cleanses me and you. Because we came from the Adamic nature, so anybody from the Adamic nature needs to be penalized. Need to be penalized by the wrath of God. Because sin before God is an offense. So we understand that there is no intimacy with the Holy Ghost even without the blood speaking for you. Are we together? There is no protection without the blood. There's no preservation. Last week we heard a message, preservation without the blood. There's no preservation. Even in Egypt, the Bible said, he said, tell, tell, tell Moses, Moses, they killed the lamb. That was a Passover. He said, put the blood on the doorpost. So when the angel of death is passing, it will pass over. And the Bible said the Israelites were preserved. Why? They were preserved because of what? By their hard work? Talk to me somebody. No, sir. Why were they preserved? Because they were Israelites? No, sir. Because they, because they could defend themselves? No. They were preserved because when the angel saw the blood, it passed over. Yes, this month of August, any arrow of death, they shall pass over you. Amen. They shall pass over you. Amen. They shall pass over you. Amen. They might have manipulated in their cover. Father, in the name of Jesus, I present the blood in that cover. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. They shall not see your picture. Amen. When they invoke your picture, the blood will speak for you. Amen. When they invoke your picture, the blood will speak for you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Any evil sacrifice they are planning to do against you. Father, I have bought that sacrifice. Amen. By the blood, I have bought it. Amen. I cancel it. Amen. I reverse it. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So it says, when we talk about the blood of Jesus Christ, we are looking into the mandate of the blood. The mandate of the blood. The mission why the blood of Jesus was shed on the cross. The mandate, the mission. Now remember, Jesus shed his blood for a purpose. For a mission. Hallelujah. I don't think any of us came to service today just by coming. Hello? And anyway, many are coming if you are chosen. Because I got to a place for a mission. I should have a mission. So Christ Jesus never came and died on the cross and shed his blood just for fun. No, sir, no man. That's why they receive power in the blood. If believers can understand the place of the cross of Calvary, they can understand the name of Jesus, they can understand the blood of Jesus, their spiritual warfare will be. In fact, they will, they will overcome all warfare. 
Because in warfare, I need gadgets to fight. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. In pulling down, strong. So the, the, so the weapons that are strong through God, why? Because when I invoke the name of Jesus, the Bible says, uh, every knee must bow. Means even their gadgets must bow. Are we together? When I invoke the blood in spiritual warfare, when I invoke the blood, when I bring the cross, when you bring the cross in any warfare, you must win that warfare. Amen. Are we together? Yes. So we have to understand the mandate, the mission of the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm teaching on the cleansing. Cleansing by? Yes. Cleansing by? Yes. By the blood of animals? Yes. Alright, let's continue. So Christ's death on the cross fulfills God's will. Christ, I'm teaching, so I'll be a little bit slow. Christ's death on the cross fulfills God's will. What is the will? For him to be a sacrificial lamb. Why must he sacrifice? He sacrificed because of the sin, the offense. Sin is an offense before God. So the will is for him to come and die that anyone who believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So we must understand the mission of the blood, the mandate of the blood of Christ. Because that's why he became the source of eternal salvation when he shed his blood on the cross. So there is a life in the blood of Jesus Christ. If we understand and apply it, hallelujah. Amen. There are some people who are carrying spiritual marks, evil marks on them. When you invoke the blood, when you know the power in the blood and invoke the blood upon you, the mark disappears. Today, it must happen. Amen. Any evil mark here that they have marked you, wherever they have marked anyone here, from your father, mother's house, Father, by divine authority, I invoke the blood of Jesus and I cancel that mark. Amen. Any mark of this favor, I cancel it. Amen. I cancel it Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Any mark of this favor upon your life in the spiritual realm, I cancel it by the blood. Amen. I cancel it by the blood. Amen. By the power of the blood of Jesus, Amen. I cancel those marks. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we are looking at the mandate. Hallelujah. Amen. Christ died. Number one, it fulfills the, the, uh, the will of God. It also perfects those who have been sanctified. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 10. Please let me write scriptures. Hebrews 10, 14. Hebrews 10, 14. So when you go back, please study. Please study. Please, I advise you, get a Bible, hard copy, not phone. Study the scriptures. Because we are living in the end time where deception is real, even from the pulpit. People deceive from the pulpit. But when you study the scripture to show yourself approved unto God, you cannot be deceived. Are we together? So please learn to write the scripture and go back home and verify. Don't just look at the place, it's very nice. Yes, I agree with you, it's very beautiful. But go back and check the scripture. If what the man was saying is true, that you may not be deceived. People are using this thing to make money today. Are we together? Yes, sir. I'm not judging, I'm not accusing. I'm just trying to advise us to grow spiritually mature in spiritual things. Are we together? Yes, so that is in Hebrews chapter number 10, verse 14. We can see that there. So the plan of salvation for mankind was achieved only when the blood was shed on the cross of Calvary and through the eternal spirit. So without the Holy Ghost, the blood couldn't have been shed. Because Jesus got to a point, he said, Not my will. What would help him not to exercise his own will is only the Holy Spirit. Amen. You get to a place of pain, a place of shame, and you say, not my will. Let your will be done. It must be the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost was involved. Hallelujah. Yeah. In Luke chapter number 5, verse 32, Luke 5, 32, Luke 5, 32 says, I have come not for the righteous, but for sinners to repent. Luke 5.32 Jesus says, I have come not for the righteous men. I have come not for those who are clean. I came not for those who are well, who are healthy. I came for sinners to repent. So the blood is there for a sinner who understands the power of the blood for washing and cleansing. Because you cannot be cleansed only by the blood of Jesus. But you must understand why the blood was shed. You must understand the person of the blood. Are we together? So he said, I didn't come for the righteous, but I came for sinners to repent. So the blood was shed for repentance. Of what? From sin. Not just repentance, but cleansing from sin. 
Because I understand that a lot of prayers have been hindered because of sin. People have been praying. That's true. We can pray and pray and pray. It's beautiful. But I need and I prefer to pray shorter and have so much answers. You know what? Because there are many people that have been praying but no answers. So in, at the end, they'll be desperate. They'll be angry even at God. You have not answered me. But no, sin is a problem. When there is sin, John chapter 9 verse 31. God, for we know that God does not answer sinners. God does not answer sinners. So we have to understand that the blood was shed for the forgiveness, the cleansing of sins. But you, a sinner, must understand and walk in the light of the scriptures and the knowledge. For knowledge is power. You must study the scriptures to know. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, don't, please don't just come to church as a church goer. Be a believer. Did you hear me? Yes. Please don't just be a church goer. Be a believer of Christ Jesus. We are here to raise born again. That's why our messages are straight to the point. We take it only in the scripture. We are not preaching prosperity here. Can I tell you something? The greatest prosperity is the prosperity of your soul. And I define prosperity as the permit me, the amount of, although it cannot qualify, the amount of the presence of God you carry per second and you can manifest it. That's how I define prosperity. Yes, sir. Not money. I define it as the amount, although we cannot quantify God, please, I'm just trying to elaborate something. The, okay, the quality of the presence of God I carry per second. And I manifest it. Manifestation is what we want. Not just talking. That's prosperity for me. Hallelujah. Amen. So I can say I'm prosperous because God is flowing through me. So I'm prosperous. Hello? Yes, sir. I say hello. Hi. But some of us, we define prosperity as the amount of cash you have. No, sir. You can have amount of cars and jet, but God has rejected you long time ago. You didn't get to go. Yeah. This, thing is, this thing is not your work. He sent you for a mission. Hallelujah. So let's preach the truth. Let's speak the truth and say the truth. So, you see, sometimes we think that when we lie, when we tell lie, we cut short, we, we perfect everything, that's when we have the game. No, sir. When you speak the truth, the one that sent you knows how, when and how to bless you. Don't make sure God to get there early enough. My friend, no. Go slowly. Follow him. Your mission is to follow him. He has a mandate to bless you. Did you, you. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's your mission. Your, your, your priority is to seek the Lord Jesus first and his righteousness. Hallelujah. Your priority as a believer should be to seek him first. Seek the kingdom first. Seek the Holy Ghost first. Seek Jesus first. Seek God the Father first. And when you seek him first, he has the responsibility. Every other thing should be added unto you. He knows when and how. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So in Romans chapter number 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Please let me explain something to you. He said the wages of sin is what? Yes. Talk to me so much. Is what? Yes. So you see, when we go to work, we work and at the end of the month, we are being paid a wage or salary. Are we together? So you are paid because you have worked. So if you don't work, you are not being paid. Is that correct? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. So which means that when you work in sin, you have a wage and your wage is dead. When you live a sinful life, you have a salary. The salary is death. Which can be spiritual and physical. Are we together? He yes. said, but, so there are two kinds of people. There are people who, 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 who walk in sin and they have wages of death. There are other class of people who walk, he said, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ. The gift of God. So you, you realize that for, for you to earn a wage, you must work. Are we together? For you to earn a salary, you must work. Correct? So you labor to have a salary. So you labor in sin to have a wage, which is debt. Is that profitable? Is that profitable? But he said, but the gift of God, which is free. So you see that many don't want the gift of God, which is free. They want what they can work for. And in the end, they have a wage, which is sin. Or death. He said, but the gift of God is free and eternal life. So the blood is there to cleanse a sinner 
a sinner who had been laboring in sin to cleanse a sinner that they might not harbor or they might not earn death, but they might be translated in eternal life. Or they might have eternal life. So the blood is there to help sinners to repent. So without repentance, there's no eternal life. There's no salvation. Yeah. Are we together? Yes, Are we together? Yes. So in Hebrews chapter number 10, Hebrews 10 verse 4, he said, because it was impossible for the blood of bulls and goats. Hebrews 10 verse 4. Please write it down. Hebrews 10 4. For it was impossible for the blood of bulls and goats. To do what? To take away what? Sin. To take away sin. So the problem was not righteousness. The problem was sin. Are we together? The problem of the Adamic generation was not righteousness. It was sin. So when sin stepped in, there was separation between man and God. Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2. For your iniquity, sin, lawlessness, has separated you from your God. From your God. Means he was your God before, but when sin came in, there was separation. Which means that separation is death. So when there is sin, there is death. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of life is eternal life. So we are gathered as a church. To have a, to make eternity. Are we together? You didn't hear me? We are gathered here for eternity. He said, preparing believers for the second coming. And Jesus, whether we like it or not, he's coming back soon. Please live ready. Please tell someone live ready. Amen. Tell someone never live ready. Amen. Say never, never. Live, ready. live ready. Say Jesus, Jesus. Christ, Christ, the Son of God, is coming back soon. Are you ready? For the rapture? the rapture? One more time. Say, Nebo. Nebo. Are you ready? Are you ready? For, the For the rapture? For Jesus Christ, For Jesus Christ. the Son of God, Son of God. is coming back soon. The church needs to inform and prepare us for this rapture, for the wedding. The church needs to inform us for the wedding day. It needs to prepare us for the wedding day. The master is coming soon. Hallelujah. But you see, the church today is busy preparing us for the mundane things of the earth. That you will die and live them. The church today is preparing, is busy preparing us. The church is not preparing believers as we say nowadays. We are, they are preparing the church for us. Hello? I say hello. I didn't call myself. I was sent. So I'll speak the truth. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The church has the mission, the mandate to prepare, to propagate the mission of Christ. The gospel is not being preached nowadays. The gospel is not preached because anything out of Christ is not the gospel, it's the it is entertainment. The gospel is about Jesus Christ. So any message out of Jesus Christ is not the message. Are we together? Yes, when, if you look at Luke, uh, uh, John chapter 1, verse 29, there about. When John the Baptist saw Jesus coming, what did he say? He said, Behold the Lamb of God. Why? Because his main mission was to prepare the way for him to come. He came and was preaching what? Repent. Repent, repent for the kingdom of God is where? Is where? And have repentance is not a preach today. We want to enter the kingdom without repentance. No, sin is a barrier. Thank be to God. Glory be to God. The cleansing blood is available. The cleansing blood is available. Yeah. It's available. Yeah. So he said, animal sacrifices could not cover. He said, animal sacrifices only cover sin. When you sin and you cover it, you are digging, you are digging yourself deeper. Animal sacrifices, they could not blot out the sin. They could only cover it for a time. Season. So ladies and gentlemen, I will advise you when you sin, go to God and confess. Hello? Huh? He said, animal sacrifices, they could not just for a season. That is why you notice that nothing could appease God except the blood of his own son. He said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over. Why? Which blood? It was a typology of the blood of Christ to be shed on the cross. And the cross is the greatest altar. So in spiritual warfare, you must understand the cross. Because in spiritual warfare, you are dealing with altars. I mean, okay. In spiritual, in spiritual warfare, you deal with altars. Because I am fighting from an altar. 
The eyes stand on the cross of Calvary to fight. That's why you fire, you back. If you fire again, it backfires. You know what? The cross is about. The cross is the greatest altar you can ever think of. So you must understand that. That's why the blood was shed on the altar. Because, ladies and gentlemen, if they are to sacrifice, they sacrifice on altar. And what do they need? Blood. Is it from oil? Talk to me soon. Is it from oil they need? Yes, they need the blood. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So animal sacrifices were just for temporal use. So in Matthew, let's go to Matthew chapter number 26, verse 28. Now remember, we are dealing with here, we are dealing here with the Adamic race. Yes, we are under grace. Yes, but that's, we are under grace. But I, I agree with you. We are under grace, not under the law. I agree with you. But a person who can the Adamic seed must understand the place of the grace. Must understand because without the blood, grace cannot cover you. The blood will first of all cleanse you before grace can. By the way, coming to God is by the blood. Are we together? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew 26, 28 says, For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. For what? Forgiveness for forgiveness of sin. Remission of sin. So the blood still speaks cleansing of sin. Amen. Forgiveness of sin. But I came to understand that believers don't confess to God. Believers can confess to a mortal man. And not to God. That's the mistake. Believers, so-called believers, we confess to more time men. Now, if I did something wrong to a person A, and I go to C, and I confess to C that I did something wrong to A, can that more time man forgive me? Talk to me somebody. They can either encourage you or they can just deform you. But it is wisdom, wisdom permits that we go to God, the author of salvation, and speak to him. But we go to a mortal man, a mortal man will give you their own counsel. And they can never forgive you. A mortal man can never forgive you. If God does not intervene. Nobody can forgive your sin except Jesus Christ. And that's why I'm talking about the power in the blood of Jesus. The cleansing power in the blood. To do what? To forgive sins. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember the problem was not righteousness. The problem was sin. The problem with the Adamic nature, Adamic sin, Adamic race is not righteousness. Sin because if the Adamic race was righteous, Jesus would never come back and share his blood. Because there was a problem, there was a diversion. Sin came in, the whole human race died spiritually. When sin came in the Garden of Eden, the human race died spiritually. There was separation. So Jesus came to restore intimacy with God. And we may be alive spiritually, and it's only through the power and the blood. That's why the blood still speaks. Hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. Remember that the blood speaks why? Because remember the problem is sin. Remember Romans 6.23. Remember the scripture. Romans 6.23. Ezekiel 18, 4 and verse 20. Remember the two scriptures. Because Romans says, for the wages of sin is death. And in Ezekiel 18, 4, it says, All souls are mine. The souls of the father, the children, children, all souls are mine. He said, the soul that sinned, shall die. You see, again, the same thing. In verse 20, again, we see, the soul that sinned, shall die. So sin kills a person, physically and spiritually. So when you're living a sinful life, you can never fellowship with God. When you're living a sinful life, you can never communion with Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus had to come to share his blood. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no big, there's no small sin. Sin is sin before God. Hallelujah. Some people have said yesterday, I lied. I lied yesterday. It's just something very small. My friend, sin is sin before God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So actually, sin brought spiritual death and physical death. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, Ephesians 1 7 says, In him we have redemption through what? Through his blood. Ephesians 1 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of what? Sins. So sin has been the problem. Even though Christ has paid for it, there is a pathway for you to be free from it. Hallelujah. Yes. Even though Christ Jesus shed his blood on the cross, 
You must understand and come to it with knowledge and understanding. Can I ask you a question? Do you know that the blood of Jesus can be here? And there are people here that are sick. Okay, thank you. Do you know that the blood can be over this hall? There are people here that, that are tormented right now by evil spirit. Do you know why? They have not come to the knowledge of the cleansing power of the blood. It's about knowledge. With knowledge and wisdom. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your time. You must know wisdom. Knowledge is important. Knowledge of what? The scriptures. Knowledge of what? The power and the blood. Knowledge of what? Jesus Christ. Knowledge of what? The cross of Calvary. Knowledge of what? The Holy Ghost. It is like a man is hungry. And the man is living next to a restaurant. Can that man die of starvation or no? Talk to me somebody. Can that man die of starvation or no? He's living next to a restaurant. And the food is free. Can that man die of starvation, of starvation or no? Yes, he can die. Why? If he doesn't take the step to go to the restaurant, hmm, he has to take food, he has to put it in his mouth, if not, he will die there. Are we together? Okay, let's say, Pastor, the man is paralyzed. Okay, put food in front of him, in his own room. If he doesn't take the food and put it in his mouth, he will die of hunger, even though food is in front of him. The same thing is happening to church today. The blood of Jesus is available. They were not making use of the blood. Because there's no knowledge about the blood. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 it says, And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us, and wash us from our sins with what? In his blood. He loved us and washed us from our sins. Sin again is there. You see, he, Christ Jesus died on the cross, he loves his love. What manner of love is it that a man will sacrifice life? We all the sin we could not pay. He never owed anything. That is love. He loved us and washed us. But you see, the cleansing power does not manifest in a person's life without wisdom, without understanding, without you coming to it, without coming to the light of it. It doesn't work that way. Hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. He washed us. John chapter 3 verse 16. Popular scriptures say, for God so loved the world. He gave who? His only son Jesus, now whosoever. So, number one, you must believe in who? Jesus. To be cleansed by the blood, you must believe in Jesus. Because the blood is not, the, that blood on the cross never came from me. It came from the person of Jesus Christ. So, you must believe in the person of Jesus Christ, which you believe is important, and come to him, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. Because when you live a sinful life, sin makes people to perish. Are we together? The way you of sin, is dead. So when they sin, people perish. They die. This guy spiritually, they perish. But it says, when the blood is present, the blood was shed that we may not perish, but come to the saving knowledge of the blood and to have eternal life, everlasting life, abundant life. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, so if you don't believe in the cleansing blood, it cannot work for you. If you don't believe in Jesus, it cannot work for you. Suppose say, yeah, suppose say, Tophia, they say like me, that you know. No matter, let me tell you something. Spiritual things are not carnal things. The things of God are things of God, the world will be And they are all based on the scriptures. If there's no foundation of the scripture, whatever you are doing, you are on your own. Because God is a God of principle. Principle of what? The foundation must be the word of God. If the word of God is not there, whatever you are doing there, you are on your own. Are we together? I saw it together. That's why I'm encouraging you to study your Bibles at home. Please, call up on Facebook. You are chatting with ABC. Some old primary school friends, very old ones, from primary school friends. You are, I, I said, uh, uh, how are you doing? You are chatting with them. And you are spending more time chatting with somebody. And if you look at it for one hour, two hours, nothing has come up from it. And Jesus Christ is waiting. That, you know why? Because you have not made the kingdom your priority. When you make Jesus your priority, you don't have time for some things. That's the reality. 
Can I ask you a question? Can you be in love with the lady? I don't want to spend time with her. Talk to me, somebody. Huh? Talk to me. Is it possible? No, if you are not if you are truly in love with the lady, do you want to spend time with her or you don't want to spend time with her? Talk to me, somebody. So if you truly love Jesus, do you want to spend time with him or do you don't want to spend time with him? That we spend time more with our friends, with social activities, rather than with Jesus Christ. That's why believers cannot manifest the power of God, whatever they are. They will be threatening them. You, you shall see, and you will be crying. You are calling pastor. You cannot manifest the power there. Why? There's no power in you. Even though the Bible says, greater is in you. Do you know why? There's no knowledge of the power. Because you spend more time with social media and friends. When you spend more time with social media, Jesus goes far from you. I'd rather spend time with Jesus Christ. So when I come out, even in the desert, the sun will talk to a fetal field. Three days ago. I'd rather spend time with Jesus Christ. So when I come out, even, even when it is dry, when I step my feet in that place, it becomes a fetal field. Scripture says, I shall possess whatever the soul of my fish and bread. It is not just talking. My friend, you have to spend time with him in the closet. The more you spend time with him in the closet, the more you manifest the power. I cannot come here money first without spending time. That's why I spend more time. My phone is always off. Why? I need to spend time with him. Today I was praying. He showed me somebody. He said, he showed me somebody. It's specific information. The person, one, 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 uh, is one year, eight months, the person is going through serious depression. He showed me somebody. And I'll pray after this. How did I know that if I wasn't in the place of prayer? If I was busy chatting, now how far? <laughs> how far? <laughs> Did you take a report today? <laughs> Did you drink a bar? <laughs> how far? And you come here and start and you are saying how far? People came with problem and issue to be solved by the Lord and you are saying how far? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Priority must be. The Lord must be first. Somebody say Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God's salvation plan is for mankind to have eternal life through Christ Jesus Christ. To Christ Jesus. Come with me to the book, First uh, John chapter number. First John. Come with me to First John chapter number one, verse seven. Please. First John. I want to read it. First John chapter number one, verse seven. Are we there? First John, Second John, Third John, Jude, Revelation. There about. It goes by towards the end. It says, verse number seven says, "But if we walk in the light, as He is the light." If we walk in the light, he said, but if we walk in the light, as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all. So the blood does not clean a person who, who wants to dwell in darkness. But the blood can clean a person who wants to leave darkness and come to light. If you choose to stay in darkness, the blood cannot cleanse you in darkness. But if you want to live the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of life, the blood is available to cleanse you and to translate you. He said, but if you walk, again, let's start it. If you walk in the light as he is the light, the blood manifests in the light. The blood manifests in the light. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Verse number eight, he said, if we say we have no sin. Okay, let's go to verse number nine, please. Verse nine. If we do what? If we, confess. if we confess. confess what? Our, our righteousness? Our sin. Our sin. If, which means that there's a possibility that we may not confess our sin. If is a possibility. Hallelujah. This is, this is a cost called statistics. There's one of the subject, uh, the topic called probability. Statistics is a cost. Just like mathematics. It's mostly survey. And there's a subject, there's a topic called probability. If is probability. And it can be zero. You didn't get it? Yes, sir. Okay. Let me not talk book. Let's talk Bible. If you confess, means there are people that don't, there are people who don't confess their sin. And that is why they are held captive in darkness. They are held in bondage. Why? When they pray, no answer. Because they don't confess to the Lord. They confess to men. Because sin is a barrier and hindrance to answer prayer. Sin is a barrier and hindrance. He said, if we confess our sins, 
being faithful. So that we had a responsibility to confess before the cleansing power and the blood washes us. Are we together? The blood will never, the blood of Christ will not cleanse you if you don't confess. Hallelujah. Amen. It's like you sit down, the blood just comes and hijacks you and say you must be clean. No, it doesn't work that way. You must be zealous. You must have the zeal. You, may, you, you must want it to work for you. And it goes with knowledge. God does not force anybody. Remember, he's faithful. He doesn't. He shows you this word is like this. This one is like this. Choose this one. If we confess our sins. So I came to understand that believers don't confess. That's why prayers are being hindered. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's continue there. He said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to do what? Forgive. To do what? Forgive. Forgive. Most of us, we need forgiveness from God. The church today needs to cry for mercy. He said, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. We are busy sacrificing to God. He said, no, I don't want your sacrifice. You need the mercy. Mercy. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. If you sacrifice out of the place of mercy, there's no answer. Are we together? Yes. Are we together? Yes, sir. Are we together? Yes, sir. If you come and sow one thousand, if you come and sow ten thousand dirhams here, you are living a sinful life. You come and sow ten thousand dirhams here. There's no harvest for you. I'm just honored before God. Is there any harvest? No, sir. No, sir. I don't do magic here. Jesus is the one that answer. So if there is sin in your life, my friend, there's no harvest. Are we together? Yes, sir. No, let's be honest. Let's say, let's say it as it is. Hello? If we confess, and it, it, it says, and it is just enough to do what? To do what? To forgive and to do what? To do what? Forgive and to? Yeah, to, to forgive and to? For what? All our righteousness. So the Adamic sin is unrighteous. The Adamic branch is unrighteous. The Adamic generation is unrighteous. So we have to understand this. Because if you are talking about spiritual maturity, things of the spirit, you must understand the Adamic sin and the place of sin and the place of the blood. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Amen. The blood does not, if there's no confession, there's no forgiveness. He's right it down. If there's no confession of sins, there's no forgiveness of sins. If there's no confession of sins, there is no forgiveness. If there's no confession, there's no forgiveness, then the cleansing power cannot work in your life. But when there is confession of sins, there's forgiveness, the cleansing power manifests in your life from the inside out. From the inside out, from the inside out, from the heart to the outside. Because if you are cleansed from the outside, the inside will manifest tomorrow. Are we together? Yes. Somebody can dress very well. He has showered very well. Looks very good, but his inside is dirty. Are we together? Yes. And Jesus said, if you look at this cup, the cup, the outside of the cup is very clean. But the content is dirty. He said, no, let's reverse it. Their blood starts by washing the inside, the heart. Because when the heart is being transformed, it manifests to the outside. Are we together? So the blood starts cleansing from our heart. So the problem of Saul was not the flesh, was his heart. Was not the outside. The heart. So your heart must be touched. Your heart cannot be touched if you don't confess. Confession actually brings you to the place of brokenness. Confession of sins brings you to the place of surrender. And brokenness before God. Then God now in his infinite mercy and grace start manifesting in your life. But it's not possible if you have not confessed. Confess. Confess. You see, when you confess a matter, it breaks you down. Hello? I say hello. Hello? Even when you confess a mortal man, it breaks you down. Your ego, it breaks your ego a little bit. Is that true? Now, what more are you confessing to God? Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Yeah. So we must understand that number one, we must acknowledge the sin in our lives. We must acknowledge the sin in our lives. If you can do, if you can say, if you can, please, if you can check our lives very well, there is something in our life that does not please God, and that is sin. Hallelujah. 
Some other person almost might be life, life telling. Another person might be covetousness. If you enter your life very well, there is something in your life that does not please God. Look at it very well, it is sin. So today we shall confess it. Because we want to see manifestation, we want to hear testimonies. There are, there are testimonies that are still hanging because sin is involved. I don't know if you like to struggle. I don't want to struggle. Hello? Hi. I don't want to struggle. So I'd rather make it straight with God for the blood to speak for me. For this month of August, the Bible says the blood that speaks better things. May you speak against that sin in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So we must acknowledge a sin in our life. We must come to Jesus Christ and confess because he is the great high priest. He is the advocate, the Lamb of God. As we close, you can't come to him if you don't believe in him. You cannot come to Jesus if you don't believe in him. And if you don't believe in him, the blood cannot work for you. His blood cannot work for you if you don't believe in him. The first thing you must believe in Jesus Christ. Believe in me and believe in the Father. I will say the scripture. Hallelujah. Amen. And you must confess genuinely. When I say confession, means you confess genuinely. Don't go and steal somebody's uh, 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 screwdriver today. You, you stole a screwdriver. And, and they caught you. You say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You go. Tomorrow you come again and steal another screwdriver. You say, ah, forgive me, forgive me. Is that, for, is that confessing? Talk to me someone. Is that confessing? You are making the mockery of the person. Genuine confession means what? Means if I say, Lord, forgive me, I stole this flyer. Which means that when I come across any flyer, I should not steal it again. Hello? I say hello. So when I confess a sin before God genuinely, and I ask God for mercy genuinely, I should not go back and do the same thing. For we take the mercy of God in vain, and the grace even in vain. For the Bible says, it doesn't matter, it says, but does it mean that we sin abound more? Grace will abound? Yes, grace is there, but we are taking it for as a license to sin against God. Because God is forgiving and merciful. He said, no, don't deal with me that way. You should reverence me and fear me. For grace has a time to expire. Mercy also expire. When you stand before the judgment seat, grace and mercy have expired. You will await judgment. For it's appointed for man to die once. Then after his after his what? Judgment. His grace and mercy has ended. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. So the cleansing power of the blood washes us. Romans 10 10. Romans 10 10 say again, for with our hearts. So the cleansing power must first of all start from our hearts to clean our hearts. Because if our hearts are not cleansed, we cannot even believe in Jesus. From our heart. Hallelujah. He said, with our hearts, we believe unto righteousness. The heart is a seed of righteousness or wickedness. The heart. The heart of a man. And for with the man we confess unto what? Salvation. So, so, the mandate of the blood of Jesus is for souls to be saved. The mission of the blood being shed on the cross is for salvation. For eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans 10, 13 says, Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall. Again, we see salvation. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Cleansing by the blood of Jesus. Can we just pray? Cleansing by the blood of Jesus. Let's look into our lives, ladies and gentlemen, friends. Look into our lives very well. We are about to pray, but let's look into our lives very well. Look into your lives. Look into our lives. Examine your life very well. Look into your life. What is that sin that easily besets you? What is that sin? The blood speaks better things. It speaks salvation. I accept with you. But there must be cleansing from our hearts. There must be cleansing by the blood. Ladies and gentlemen, when sin is involved, manipulation gets very easy. Many are manipulated because sin is involved. A man that is righteous, you cannot manipulate him spiritually. Are we together? Yes. Look at your life, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? 
Oh, 